All right, you guys, we're just going to continue right where we left off. We're at the magic circle again. I know. <laughs> I seem to be ending up on this thing every single time. But we're going to continue where we left off. Wow, what a phenomenal last episode. So much reveals. My theories were wrong. That's all I want to say is my theories were wrong. I know you guys feel the same. But wow, uh, we're just going to go ahead and continue. If you haven't seen last episode, you need to watch it, okay? Next thing I know, all of us are back in the world with the, uh, the magic circle. Yeah, we're always back. <laughs> this is like the third episode I feel like we've been at this stupid circle. <laughs> at some point, we either end on it, start on it, we're always here. Yeah, I figured since it was a dream, you know, time was a lot different there. Well, he says after checking his pocket watch, it looks like we all lost consciousness for a couple of seconds. Okay, then let's just destroy it real quick. That's full well, Momo Senpai and Hina san are all out cold. Huh? Is this? I feel mighty power coursing through me. It's clear that the Maggie powers that are were being sent to meet you have returned. Hell yeah, we got an upgrade. That's what we got. Uh, it originally belonged to me. I got it back from Michiru. I wonder if there was any hints about our power being drained. Like, if we would have looked back. Uh, I know uh, Adelheid has that, like, powder or the or the perfume uh, that can, like, detect magic. I wonder if there was any way to use that to detect that we were having our magic kind of, you know, siphoned. Our mana, I should say. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look, but if you guys have any references, let me know in the comments. Because I, I would love to know if there was some kind of hint or that was happening. I feel like that was a bombshell. Like, I had no idea that's what was going on. Michiru, how are you feeling? Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, like, that was, that was just crazy that Michiru's been getting our power the entire time. Like, for years. That's great. Looking up at the sky, I see it getting brighter. Guess we don't have time to explain anything to Hina-san right now. But how are we... I contemplate how to use this power to destroy that magic circle in the air. Yeah, hopefully Angel has an idea. Suddenly Angel faintly appears before me. Oh? But it seems like I'm the only one who notices. She's visible only to me. Oh. Yeah, apparently I can just destroy this space. You know, it's mana and, you know, mana is the power of the soul, right? I can just destroy it. Perfect. As she says that, she raises a hand up in the air. Does she want me to copy her? Like this. I wonder now, since Mitru like couldn't handle our mana, like her body like physically couldn't handle it, I wonder if we can just go crazy with it. Like <laughs> we're we're obviously a lot more stronger than she is, and our body is just a little bit more built up. She smiles and vanishes after leaving those words. I mean, I don't know how that necessarily correlates with, like, physical strength, you know, being able to endure uh, the toll of mana, but let's just, let's just try it. Let's just go for it. Hell yeah. Leave it to me. Let, let's go. Okay, Koko's feel. Whoa! Hell yeah! We got red eyes too. Let's go. This is what I thought was going to happen early on, like something cool like this, and then they're like, nah, not going to happen. We're, we have no magical ability whatsoever. Finally. I'm so excited. The insides of my eyes feel hot. My vision hasn't changed, but I can tell that my eyes are uh, dyed a fiery red. I take a deep breath in an effort to contain my overflowing power and prevent it from going out of control. I tried moving my extended arm as if it plucking away the magic circle together with the whole space. <laughs> we just like broke the whole space. Hell yeah. Like th this is so awesome. Like I'm so glad they like ended up doing that twist. 
like I said, I disagree with some of the um, the things Angel did. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was all for the best, but I don't know. To me, on the outside, it seemed kind of wrong, I guess. But, I mean, it led to this moment, so, you know, I can't be too mad. Magic Circle tears apart, and pieces of it crumble down. Yeah, wait. Ah, shit, it's repairing itself. Louis announces that calmly. <laughs> Taking a closer look, I see that the terror in it is regenerating at an incredible pace. Okay, so I need to focus my power onto specific places. Alright, where are they? Okay, I mean, as much as, like, I'm happy that he has, like, this incredible power, I am kind of glad that we're, like, teaming up together for this moment. Like, it, it makes it more epic that way, if we're, like, all in it together. Sumi-chan lets her mana flow into Sabaki-chan, who seems to have used up all of her own from launching the water bo uh, bottle rocket earlier. I, I still find that funny that now we're like a red-eyed Maggie and we're, we were considering using a freaking bottle rocket. <laughs> that was our grand plan and now I'm just, I got red eyes. Like, why would we ever use the freaking bottle rocket? Sorry. As I am right now, I can clearly sense the mana that's moving between them. I don't know, we seem to be like accustomed to our mana really quickly. Like, I feel like we're not having too many issues using it at all. After receiving what little mana remains in Sumi-chan, she looks up at the sky. There are three spots. Where are they, Sabaki-chan? Okay, so the hook-shaped symbol diagonally downwards from there to the outer edge. I follow her instructions and search for those cornerstones. But still, given how fast it regenerates, by the time I get to the third one, the first one might have only already be fully repaired. Maybe I should increase the damage I do to each spot. Would that buy me enough time? Okay, let's freaking do it. While I'm hesitating, Louis yells at me angrily. I like how he was just talking calmly, like, yeah, that's not gonna work. And now he's angrily, like, it feels like a uh, Dumbledore in Harry Potter, you know, where the book and the movie kind of had a different tone. I turn to face the screen and see that Hinosan has woken up at some point and is desperately staggering to her feet. I mean, do you have a better reason than just, you know, not wanting me to destroy it. Like, th this isn't the way, okay? Freaking Knuckles would be disappointed. I can see uh, power converging to her hands. Is she trying to wring out the last of her power and stop time? Just shut up and watch. <laughs> wow, Mitsuyoshi. Not very really nice of you. She glitches out my voice and freezes up. I'll save the night students. I mean, I guess we can. But he was aggressive. He just told her to shut up. Like, that's not instilling, like, hero vibes to me. I don't know. Like, the hero doesn't tell people to shut up. <laughs> but, you know, he, he. I think he's in the moment, okay? Got it. Thanks, Bucky chan I charge up my man and extend my arm towards each of the places she indicated to me. First one. With a creaking sound, the magic circle crumbles as if it were being torn away from the sky. Top left looks like it's peeling off. Louis has his arms raised as well, aiming his mana at the damaged spots. I can feel the magic circle's regenerative power colliding with the vibrations of Louis. Next is here, huh? I picture my hand holding the perimeter and rip it away. Okay, so we got two down, and Hina is not really happy. Hina's on stairs, dumbfounded as the realm groans and falls apart. This is the last one. I focus my man on the middle of the magic circle and thrust my fist up as if I were throwing a punch. A conspicuously loud noise reverberates and a crevice runs through the center of the circle. When it reaches the other two spots, an even deeper rift forms. I think Hina sounds mad because he didn't kick it like I wanted.
Venus on stairs the magic circle of hollow, desolate eyes. The spell she worked on for 20 years is disintegrating before her. Even so, she doesn't budge. He lowers his arms. The luminous parts of the, of the circle scatter like stardust as they crumble from the sky. Rumble and debris come raining down, and the light in the magic circle slowly fades. Yeah, but they put like such eerie, kind of sad music. I just hope there's like no unintended consequences from doing this. Like, I hope we didn't just like screw something up. <laughs> You know, maybe we didn't quite understand their fl plan fully. Maybe they were actually, like, doing something a little bit differently. Hopefully that's not the case. Yeah, imagine if we don't have the key, we're just kind of stuck here. I mean, they... They said earlier that if this world were to like collapse, we'd just get forcibly removed, right? Like we should be okay. Uh, can we just leave them here? Like I'm totally not opposed. Like I'm really, really not opposed. <laughs> like we we could just leave them. Like I'm, I'm okay with that. Ah, Mitsuyoshi, don't say that. Let's carry them back. I feel bad leaving them here. I wouldn't feel bad. You would feel bad. We can bring Fujito. How about that? We compromise. We go halvesies. Okay, we bring Fujito. But we just don't bring Momo. But then again, if we don't bring Momo, she'd probably like escape and try to restart this whole thing. So we need to like watch over them. Okay, okay. You convinced me. One by one, we run through the door that Sumi Chan opens with the key of Yanis. This way now. I call out to her with the principal on my back, and with a perplexed expression on her face, she obediently follows us. I really hope we sit down and talk to her about this. Like, I really hope we sit down and kind of explain some things, and like, give her some peace of mind. I know she's like a homunculus, but Angel didn't really necessarily see her that way. So, if Angel doesn't see her necessarily as a homunculus, we need to, you know, treat her like a human being as well. Uh, maybe the, we'll make up for the mistakes that uh, Kral made. I, and I don't know if Kral was right to kind of be afraid. I mean, I mentioned it last last episode. I kind of talked to you guys about that, my thoughts. But maybe we try a different approach. Maybe we do treat uh, Sedney or Hina as, a, as, as an actual human that has a soul. And maybe that will kind of right some of the wrongs from the past. I put the principal down on the sofa. Ulrich lowers Momo Senpai beside her. Can we kick Momo? Like, just just to get it out of my system? Can I just give her a quick, swift kick? <laughs> like, oh, uh, just to get frustrations out about her just always causing problems. And just being this small thing that somehow has such incredible power. It's frustrating. Uh, yeah, we should be able to handle things. Well, he asked me that looking somewhat dazed. Huh? Probably. <laughs> Can you guys handle it from here? Passes out. Glasses on the spot after saying that. Yeah, I'm sure he kind of went above and beyond his limits. Seems so... Yeah. When I focus my eyes, I can see that Louis is indeed drained of mana. I like how we can just tell. I mean... Since we deal with souls, and, and you know, mana comes from the soul, I, I guess we can just tell how much mana people have. That's really cool. Saki-chan and Sumi-chan, you two should probably rest too. They both sit down in the spot looking exhausted. I was like, they didn't just pass out too, did they? Now then. This is kind of what I wanted us to attempt to do before all this went down, but you know, I, it probably wouldn't have happened. Yeah, you see, we met Angel earlier in the dream world. Can't remember. 
聞いたことはあると思うでも I wonder if her going crazy has like kind of changed her soul. I wonder if we could rewrite it to like fix it, you know? It's written in the diary, Hina san has almost no recollection of her time to send me due to her extended period of loneliness. That's why Angel didn't talk to her. She was looking at Hina san with such lonely eyes. She knew that her own creation had forgotten about her. Let me get this out of the way first. I'm the Maggie of Calamity that you're looking for. I can repair the souls of the night students. That's why you don't need to go through this ridiculous ritual anymore, nor do you need to fight us. She looks like she's slowly trying to parse what I'm saying. Can you lead us to where the night students are? I'll make sure I save them. Yeah, so please take us to where they are. <laughs> she stares at me looking confused. Yeah, I would be a little bit confused if someone came in, ruined my 20-year plans, uh, didn't really elaborate on that, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was like, yeah, I, I can save them. You don't need to go through this whole thing. Like, why didn't you just talk to me about this earlier? Huh? Uh, sure, if that's the logic you want to use. Sure, we'll go with that. Oh, okay. Well, good. I mean, I think he could have just asked you to, to wait a moment instead of, you know, telling you to shut up, but... So that's what it was. And here I thought she was actually being reasonable for once. Certain someone walk, uh, someone awakens energetically from her slumber. One with senpai also gets up dazedly, seeming awoken by the principal's vigor. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty hard to ignore it. I will, I will give Momo that one. Uh, th this this out of context would be really weird if I would have heard this early on. So. Oh, now you're gonna be on our side. Okay. Even though they were frantically trying to get in our way not too long ago, they obediently sit on the sofa side by side as though they're completely different people now. I don't want to think about these two on a sofa. Uh, it just gives me flashbacks to a certain event from the last game. I don't want to think about it, okay? Well, I'm glad things didn't have to get messy. Koga, you can't say that after I just mentioned that! No! <laughs> Bad timing! Terrible timing! Anyways, they're Immaculate through and through. All they know is to follow Hinasan's orders. If it really throws me for a loop, though... I can open up that portal. Let's go save them. Let's fulfill the one thing that you had to do for the last 20 years. Just seeing the two of them sit down, Hinasan faces me and says that. No, that isn't an order. Oh? You're gonna go the route of treating her like a human being. That's what he's gonna do. That's what I said he should do. My words baffle her. You're not a doll. You have a soul and a heart. You should do what you want to do and you think is right. She stares at me vaguely for a bit before she's able to respond. Okay, let's do that. Do you want to save them? Do you yourself want to save Iba-senpai, Furuya, Kasuga, Omaru, and the rest of them, not just because someone ordered you to? So... Iba... Iba... Kumiko... My phone is like blowing up right now. The two of you were close friends. Her eyes, previously clouded with confusion, have now cleared up. She understands. I really did appreciate this CG when they showed it to us. 
I, I do think it kind of illustrated their friendship. Uh, I know she's not, like, smiling or anything, but I feel like she is on the inside. And I mean, that's, like, very important, because I think she was the first person besides Angel that really accepted her, knowing her full story. I feel like... Okay, to be fair, she was kind of thrown into the classroom, like, by Angel all of a sudden, which made it kind of hard to understand what was going on. Like, people were just confused. Like, what do you mean? Who is this person? Uh, that was a natural response, whether she was actually human or not. But I, I do think uh, Eva was one of the first people that just kind of, like, got to know her first. And then, you know, like, heard the news that, like, oh, yeah, you're not actually human. I don't care. Uh, she just knew that she enjoyed being around her, and I think that was a really special and important moment for her. <laughs> Do you want to save her? <clears throat> she firmly declares that. It's not because of an order or some preconception. She decided that of her own free will. Let's do just that, then. Can you take us to where they are? How many can we bring? Okay, that's why she was constantly swapping people out. You know, we're just cool like that. Heidi and the wrestling Tsubaki chan voiced their opinions at almost the same time. The bureau members, it is. Muko, Murakuma, and I naturally gather beside Hina. Is this the will of Stein's Gate? She traces something in the air. A thin rift appears, which slowly expands. She beckons us as she walks through it. The three of us follow her inside. It's a dark and mysterious place. Several cubicle crystalline objects are floating in the air. Okay, so I'll, I, I can't remember if I speculated that they were in this. I think I might have mentioned it because it, it just seemed peculiar to me that they were all kind of floating here and stuff. I mean, it just makes sense. Because if you count, like, there's a lot of them. I strain my eyes and concentrate. Yeah, they're definitely there. I can detect the presence of people sleeping inside those cubes, as well as the wavering of their damaged souls. Oh, okay. Rokuma says that after doing a quick count of them. The number of West Storm students, the last one is Amaro. Still, there are so many of them. I'd love to get through them all at once, but I wonder if I have the mana for that. Please do. Hina san nods and mutters something softly. She apparently asked the principal Momo senpai through Ninomai to retrieve the stones. I think it was mentioned in the diary that the ermine was a communication device, come to think of it. I see. Ah, uh, the ermine is now on our side. Okay. Soon enough, the rental of Momo Senpai come running with a ton of Lazarus bloodstones. <laughs> and behind them is... <laughs> hey, Matsuki, it's been a while. Anatate comes flying in. Are we over capacity right now? Completely ignored, the principal Anatate runs up to Muko as fast as she can and hugs her. I always love how uh, Ushio gets so happy when she's around Hanatate. Like, she always has a smile on her face. 
儀式が行われなかったせいで西寮の生徒はみんな目覚めてしまっていて寄生虫のはずなのに急に学園にいたのでパニックなのです That's to be expected. 皆さん実家に戻らせてあげてください魔術でなくて普通にでいいのでそうしてウヒト、モモカはもう一度帰省させればいいのですね<笑>わかりました Don't do anything funny, alright? Get them back normally with a bus. <laughs> Just boisterously. I, I cut her off on purpose. Which worries me somewhat, and the two Makuai leave for the dorms. Okay, now that we have a frick ton of bloodstones, we should be okay. Yasan picks up one of the Lazarus bloodstones that were brought here. I do the same and notice that there are some markings engraved in it. Are we going to get an explanation about kind of how these were made? And they used as is, upon hearing that she takes out yet another stone from her pocket. では他の石を夜の生徒たちの元へ置けばええすべての石を同期させ、okay. 全員の魂を同時に修復することができるかもしれない I mean, sounds like it's worth trying. 箱の中に入れりゃいいのかじゃあやっちまおうぜ、uh, Can you even get up to those? They're like floating in the air わかった手伝うよ Raise the hand energetically We all split up and get to work I mean, can you just like, is there no gravity here? Can we just jump up and do it? I doubt Hanatate even knows what's going on right now, but she's working hard because she knows that she can ask about it later. <laughs> I like the spirit. <laughs> As I'm inserting stones in the boxes one by one, I finally reach the one that's been on my mind the entire time. Hey there, Amaro. When I was first looking around, I could instantly tell that this one was his. Alright. I hold the nucleating stone to my forehead and call out to her within my heart. Angel. Is Angel technically our stand now? Like, would it be appropriate to say that? I can feel her presence appear by my side. Am I properly controlling my powers right now? I see. Angel is me. If she says so, then I have no reason to be worried. I mean, I tell myself that things are going to be okay all the time, and then they go to shit, so... Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust myself. I'm glad he can. Tabuko and the others who can't see Angel, I probably look like I'm just concentrating. I can feel their souls wavering, worriedly, perhaps because I've gone so long without saying a word. How do I save them? Got it, I'll give it a shot. Hold on. Are you sure you don't want to talk to Hina-san? She said me. I can tell she's shaking her head again. What I said. I mean, she doesn't need a master, but what about a mother? What about a creator? Her presence vanishes after she says that. If that's what she's decided, then I'll respect her wishes. I take a deep breath and calm myself down. Envelop them, filling in their wounds. I pour my man into the nucleating stone as do as Angel instructed. I do have to say, though, the red eyes make him look evil. <laughs> like, I know he's supposed to be, like, the good guy, of course, right? Uh, but it, the red eyes just make you look evil, no matter who you are. I open my eyes and look at the stone. It's giving off a faint glow, and so did the boxes, as if they're all resonating with one another. Yeah. <laughs> wow, we really have a lot to say right now. 
a guy to lie inside the box to surround the damage souls. I mean, we are concentrating, so I mean, it would be bad if we're like concentrating too much on a conversation, but wraps around their trembling wounds. And then I feel the scars disappearing. Just a little bit more, I have to get rid of all of them, even the smallest ones. Focus on the nucleating stones again and give it more of my mana. Okay. I panicked. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Controlling my mana is much more delicate and difficult affair than I thought I would be. I mean, we went from having no mana to all of a sudden having, like, tons. And a careful work is extremely outside of my comfort zone. I can't back out now. Pull myself together and concentrate on the stone. Just let the man work. He's doing fine. I can hear her praying for me from behind. Yeah, I did promise her after all that I'd be able to handle this power. She's supporting me, and then I... I can sense a familiar presence from the box before me. Just wait, it's almost over. My mana doesn't go out of control and moves to the nucleating stones to all the boxes. Uh, I'll be able to see him again very soon. Though when I think that, the stone and boxes emit a blindingly bright light. The entire room is immersed in it, and I feel like I'm floating. There we go. Got the cool music again. The light slowly dissipates and I'm able to see the room again. I feel like all these music tracks that are dropping here are like so good. There's been a lot of awesome music. Finally meet again. With his arms wrapped around his knees curled into a ball, he stirs and slowly opens his eyes. With a crack, the Lazarus bloodstone that rolls out from the box shatters and disappears. They fall from the boxes one after the other and break in a similar fashion. I used up all the mana they had. Mm. Yeah, Hina-san, could you open up the other boxes? She nods and places a hand on one nearby. Hesitating, uh, she opens it carefully as if she were untying a thread. Must be tougher since up until now the soul would always combust again whenever the box is opened. Her voice is tinged with surprise and happiness as she looks at the student inside. She goes around opening all the remaining boxes. I really like that she's being involved in this because I feel like this is, you know, her, her whole, like, life's goal, right? Uh, like, ever since she was born. Like, I mean, shortly after this ended up being becoming like her everything uh, that she's been working on for the past 20 years what? and it's like even before then like she was like trying to foster these relationships and then you know they all kind of went sour there at the end and then this happened and, and all she's wanted it is to like restore them this whole time so i'm really glad like koga involved her in a way like he didn't just do all the work himself You've been sleeping for 20 years? What do you mean you're tired? Students wake up from their slumber confused by their surroundings. I mean, I can sleep for a really long time and still be tired. I, I think actually sleeping longer makes you more tired. So, okay, I'll give them that. As does the one before my eyes. He rubs his eyes as he gets out of the box. Yo. <laughs> I love that that's our first word to him. Just yo. <laughs> it's like, I'm a red-eyed Maggie, by the way. <laughs> I had so much I wanted to talk to him about, but I'm at a loss as to what to say. Muko and Murakuma come running towards us. On the other side of the room, I see Hina-san running up to Iba-senpai. Can't blame him, he's been asleep for 20 years after all. <gasps> it seems that he's finally realized what's going on and he lets out an alarmed voice as he looks around at us. <laughs> the body is yours, relax. 
傷ついていたあなたの魂を癒したんですもう誰にも憑依してねえから安心しろミッチーが本当いや俺もう誰の体も乗っ取ってないのこのまま起きてていいのいいよほら私ここにいるし That's pretty rare that we see these two on the same <laughs> at the same time, you know. Onatate, who had been quiet up until now, steps forward with a smile on her face and speaks to Amaro. Hanatate,Mutskides.Hanatate,Sun.Ah,Ushio-san,Sagashita,Otomodachi.Hanatano,Tomashi,Oroshi,Tanon.Mutski,Karada,Tanis.So,So,So,So,So,So,So,So,So
uh, to handle things. And then, like, you know, we kind of got to this point and we were able to do it. Like, we had confidence, we had an understanding of, you know, homunculuses and uh, just everything that needed to be done, right? Like, we had the, the willpower to do it because of all these events that led up to this. Uh, and we were, like, discovering mysteries and things like that. Like, it, it's, it feels good, you know, that we've gotten to this point. It feels like we've had a journey. It feels rewarding to me. All the other students also give us bows and words of gratitude. We're all embarrassed to be at the center of attention. <laughs> Neko, no. Unless you're talking about somebody else. One of them seems to be off in their own little world, and I pretend not to notice. <laughs> Chad Koga? Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to wait here for another 20 years. In response to Eva's senpai's question, she points to the back of the room. Oh, what? I mean, I, I kind of saw something like this happening, but that's kind of sad. Then we're not going to get to see Amaro. Unless we get to see Amaro grown up. That would be cool. We get to see him just, like, super bulky. He's been hitting the gym for 20 years in preparation for meeting us. I mean, the 20 years ago. We better get a happy CG of all them with Hina. There better be a happy CG at the end. Would have been a disaster if I had made a mistake and accidentally brought them out of this space. Really glad that didn't happen. Seeming to have realized the same thing, Muku gives a sigh of relief. But now that means. Once I go for that door, it will really be goodbye. But I mean, we can still see them in the current time, right? I mean, they're just going to be older. Hey, Amaro. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I borrow your notes from math class? <laughs> Thanks a bunch. I slept for a couple of classes. My notes are completely blank on those days. Yeah. He laughs. I lost her words of my behavior. It'll be the last time seeing this face, huh? But... <laughs> Matsugi, I love the way you put that. Okay. Is it because we're not on hold any longer? Oh, yeah. Murakumo-kun, I mean, Awara's kind of been our matchmaker this whole time. I think mean, he's wanted us to get together, but like, as friends, but we kind of ended up as more than friends. I guess so. Yeah, you don't need to worry about us. She to say something to hide her embarrassment, but can't come up with anything. That's the feeling you're getting from Muko. She looks down with her face be red. I guess this is goodbye then. I mean, as sad as it is to, like, lose them right after we just, you know, got them back, like, this is the good ending. I think this is what needed to happen, uh, and I'm really happy with this. Okay, I'm, I'm really happy that they get to go back and, like, kind of continue to live their lives after everything has happened. Welcome as I am, Omar and the other students are from 20 years ago. And I think this is what Kral, I think this is what Angel, and ultimately this is what Sadie wanted. Obvious that they should go back to their own time period. Neko, um. Yeah, anyways, bye. <laughs> I, I, on one hand, will not miss Neko. Thank you. 
My Yubi, you are always losing stuff, so I'm not really gonna like miss you too much. I'm just gonna be honest. Exactly. Thank you, Shio. As she weeps for you, takes turns shaking each of her hands and thanking us. My students also look somewhat reluctant to part as they head towards the exit. Furia, who is on her way out with Kazuga, seems to have made up her mind on something and comes running back up this way. What is it? I will personally kick you through the door. <laughs> like what? No, no, don't ask for it. I know exactly what you're thinking. No, not allowed. No. Are you telling me to strip? I can't believe they made her mention that again. Ah! <laughs> oh, no. Don't glare at me that hard, Muko. You're scaring her. I can't, I can't believe I'd hear that one last time. They, they just couldn't resist. Furia could not resist mentioning it one more time. Alright, anyways, bye. <laughs> Does that cheerfully throw it with a some though with a somewhat sad expression to parts. A sad expression? Why are you sad that you couldn't get my underwear, you weirdo? Not a bad person, but <laughs> I really hope these two go back together. Like, Hina is planning on going back, right? Uh, I, I just think that would be the good ending. Like, if they could go back, now they all know her, uh, and they could have, like, a happy ending, right? Oh, is she not going? I, I mean, I'm not like, I, it's not that I don't want her in the current time. I just think that's where she belongs. Oh, you can't go back? Can we, like, make an exception? Eva-san, uh, Eva-senpai hugs Hina-san as hard as she can. Tears roll down Hina-san's cheeks. If she were a doll, she would never experience this feeling. With a smile on her face, Eva Senpai heads for the door back to the past. Hina-san opens the door to the past. Voices saying goodbye and thank you overlap one another as the night students file through. Oh, this is so sweet. To me, the other side of the door is blindingly bright and I can't see anything. Yeah. Of course, they put a Maro in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow. If in 20 years you still remember us, I don't know if that'll be possible. His memories of the future might disappear once he returns to his own time, but still, come pay us a visit, okay? I'd be okay if their memories get wiped, but he always has this longing to, to visit somebody that he just can't quite remember. I always like when they have moments like that, where it's just kind of like, uh, like through through time, like they just kind of always have that feeling that there's something missing. 
You know how it's his face beaming. Yeah, you too. Gives us a big wave before running through the door. And then the door closes. See you. Is this going to be the end? Yep. Okay. I mean, clearly there's some more after this, right? Like, they're not just going to end there, because, I mean, we got to still wrap up everything with, with Ushio. I'll probably skip over this, because every time I try to play one of these um, endings, they're always like, oh yeah, here's an H scene, you know, by the way. Hold up, I want to see this real quick, just because this, this little scene's cute. Maybe I'll watch this on my own time, okay? Nope, I can't even skip it, so I guess we're watching it. If, if I have to censor something, though, I won't be happy. Gosh, I forgot about all that stuff with Rito real quick. Just, we've had so much going on. Uh, that was that was really great with Rito. Wait, what happened with the mirror? Did we already see what happened with that? I don't remember what happened to the mirror. Did we get something that happened with the mirror? Am I, am I remembering wrong? I don't know what happened to the mirror. Well, anyways, I guess something happened with the mirror. It was nice seeing Angel, though. I really liked how they brought her in. I feel like they brought her in kind of late. I mean, they, they introduced her, what, like, episode 5? And we didn't really get to see more of her until, like, way past that. Okay, that fight was cool. That fight was really good. Uh, I liked Adelheid facing Ulrich. Okay, this this CG right here went hard. Also, can I just say that I love that they're doing like this as like a one big timeline? That was really cool. Uh, but yeah, that that whole CG was badass. I gotta say, even Momo looked pretty badass there. Oh. I had to make that the thumbnail because that was just an awesome, awesome scene. Like I really loved seeing them connect like that. Like, I feel like it was a, a long time coming. Okay, and then we got to kind of see, you know, the, this whole room and stuff. That was really cool. It was really sad, like, kind of seeing them go. But at the same time, that's the ending I would have wanted. I would have wanted them to go back to their own time and everything, you know. Uh, I think that's what needed to happen. Okay. W where do we go from here? Are we just gonna... Go into Ushio and Koga? You know, kind of like a little bit of an after story type thing? Is that what's going to happen here? I mean, I'm okay with that. Okay, yes. I, I Subtitle, or the... I, I want to get to the action, okay? What happens next? Because I'm, I'm waiting to give my full thoughts about everything at the end. Can I skip this? I cannot skip this. <laughs> Please, let me skip. I'm waiting to know. Director at peace. Do 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 do. I I'm assuming it's almost done. Like I don't want to skip it, but at the same time I do. <laughs> I'm like, should I just pause the video, skip to the end? Okay, there we go. It's done. Thank goodness. Really, they're going to hit us with the next day after everything that just happened. It's like, oh yeah, the next day, you know, things happened, right? After seeing the night sins off, we all slept like logs until the afternoon. Our exhaustion having caught up with us now that everything was resolved. Yeah, I guess we are. Uh, how is he gonna go about uh, producing a, an heir? Like he's supposed to have a child. How is that gonna work? Okay, 
After things settled down a bit, the Germans said that they would be returning home at once, so we hurriedly came to see them off. Yeah, how could they just leave? They better return, like, just to say hi. Yeah, what a freaking buzzkill, Ulrich. And he shrugs. Anatate and the others burst out laughing at that gesture. しいもんね、お嬢様。何よ。本家のご機嫌取ったらまた遊びに来てあげようと思ってたのに、やめようかしら。ああ、嘘嘘。また来て。うん。来て。うんうん。とっておきのお茶用意しとく。本当本当。
Heidi is practically driving Ulrich, who has his head drooping through the main gate. Okay, bye Adelheid. Oh, I'm sad that they're leaving already. Gonna even have tea. Heidi energetically waves her hand while the other two uh, walk away with slumped shoulders. Well, now we need to know what's going on with the school. Now that like we've kind of solved everything, is the school gonna shut down or is it gonna come back? しーちゃん、男の子だから早いでしょ女の子はいろいろと荷物が多いの。ちゃん、男の子だから早いでしょ女の子はいろいろと荷物が多いの。<laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's this about clothes? Yeah, that's true. You always wear the same outfit every day anyways. Everyone's just gonna say screw packing. We're just gonna go look at freaking Sumi-chan's clothes. Why does she always wear the same thing? I wonder if my suitcase is enough. This is Japan, after all. They'll do that. Yeah, what's gonna happen between these two? We need to see how... Things go with the school. We need to see what happens now that they're not on hold anymore. Or I'm assuming they're not on hold anymore. Maybe they still technically are and they're gonna they're gonna finally end that. With Mitra over at Simi uh, Chan's room, I didn't really feel like heading back to my own. Instead I came to the bureau office. I didn't have that much to pack, so I can leave that for tonight. Okay, my other question is though, now that those students have gone back to the past and they presumably aren't dead, so now the timeline's gonna change. How is how is the school going to change because of that? Are we going to find something left there by Omaru? Or, you know, what's going to happen? Heidi, Louie, and Ulrich are gone now. It's gotten a lot quieter. I just want to know, is the timeline changed because of that? I would assume so, right? Those noisy and fun days are never coming back again. Nor will the time spent in this room. Muko. The door opens and Muko peeks in. Please. She smiles upon seeing my face. Weren't we just invited to tea and now we're just gonna make our own tea? That she feels the same way as me. We chat with each other as we drink the tea that she prepared. Yeah. Unfortunately, that statue I broke remains in a state of disrepair. According to Hina-san, it's not possible to, impossible to fix, but it'll require a lot of time because of the delicate work involved. Let's just use our power to fix it. Are we still a lot at the school? We're technically too old. <laughs> Okay, Fudo. あんた絶対反省してねえだろ。無理。つづら折り坂不人にはそんな概念はないわ。主が反省しろというなら、マママです。どうする？It'd be pointless anyway, so it's fine. They're hopeless. That's what he just said. And the end. The principal is still running the school for the sake of convenience, but under Hina-san's supervision. Well, there's nothing we can do about that. It's too late to quit now. Okay, so they're just kind of keeping everything as it was. We'll see if that goes well. Actually, Muko, I thought you hated bureau work. Aha, I guess. 
I miss the tumultuous everyday life we had. It's not bad to be able to relax in peace, but it seems that dealing with fairies and flying music scores is right up my alley. Just like back then. Oh yeah, I wonder what he's doing now. Considering he was our age 20 years ago, he's probably married into someone's father by now. Can't imagine that at all. They're not gonna pull some shit like, oh yeah, actually I'm the father of like one of the characters, like Hanatate. They're, they're not gonna pull some shit like that, are they? Because it would make sense. Hmm. Hmm. It's like another uh, visual novel I know of. I want to know if they're gonna do something like that, because that would be interesting. Uh, we'll see, though. We'll see. They don't have to do that for, for it to be interesting. But the, the fact that they mentioned it like that makes me think that there is something going along those lines. I wonder if he remembers us. Yeah, he promised that he'd come visit if he did. He places our cup on the table and looks to be thinking deeply about the matter. Yes, I wonder if he kept them or not. Yeah, I'm sure Hina-san would want to meet all of them now if she could, especially Iba-san. Huh? Same here. Even if he got, forgot after he returned, I hope that one day he'll suddenly remember about the people he was friends with for a short period of time. Hi. Look at reflects of your spawns to reserve knock on the door. However, we're in the middle of school holidays, so there shouldn't be any students here, leaving her perplexed. Murakuma and the others wouldn't knock. Maybe it's someone from the disciplinary committee. No, that would mean there's some sort of incident, and they wouldn't knock so quietly. Don't tell me. Feels somewhat nostalgic, and I impulsively get up from my seat. Ah! Is this his daughter? Yoshida. The daughter. Uh, the door. <laughs> the door opens, and my classmate Yoshida Sora uh, shyly pops her head in. I don't know, cause the last names don't match, do they? Yeah, no, it doesn't. Hmm. I'm taken aback by this unexpected face. Now I'm just speculating that one of these people is is his daughter. But none of the last names match, so I'm not sure how that would work. Maybe they like took on a different last name? I don't know. Hesitantly slides to the door. What are you doing here? This isn't actually Amaru, like, taking over her body, right? Like, that's not... It's not, like, the same thing Ushio did with Kuridani. It just seems weird that all of a sudden Yoshida's here. <laughs> For some reason, she's unable to speak clearly in pigeons. Pigeons. <laughs> Just get on with it! What could it be against a Ramuka, but even she's stumped. And then, out of nowhere like a bolt of lightning, I suddenly remember something. Yoshi mentioned this in the middle of a discussion we were having way back then. Oh? No way. I rush past Yoshida and dart out of the bureau office. <sighs> hey now, don't run away. I see the person hiding in the shadow of the door and force to drag him into the room. Hell yeah, we get to see him again. Hell yeah. I'm so glad they did this. The one panicking and waving his hands is... Dang, look at this guy! What the heck? He's so old. Maro, I knew it was you. <laughs> He's grown up a lot and his countenance hasn't changed one bit. He smiles embarrassingly, just like he used to do. What are you doing leaving the explanation to Yoshida? <laughs> Okay. 
So I was trying to think, like, who could his daughter be? Like, it'd be kind of weird if it was Hanatate, only because, like, he was kind of, like, taking over her body. But I, I thought maybe that was because, you know, being related, they had kind of a connection, right? Um, so that could have maybe possibly made sense. Yoshida Sora. But why, why is the last name different then? Hmm. Unless we totally rewrote the timeline. Mm. Well, now I want to go back and rewatch the scene where they are in that dream, if you remember that. And she was mentioning her parents, like, kind of walking away from her or something. I want to go back and see if that was really, like, him. If I can you kind of tell. That's cool, though. He was going to school with his daughter. Oh, okay. I figured they were going to explain that. I, I figured it, it had to have been, like, the wife's name, or... I don't know, she just had a different name for some reason. We can figure out that much. I suddenly remembered Yoshida remember, uh, mentioning a while back that her father said Kotaro's a name given to second sons. Those <laughs> her hands in front of her face. <laughs> well, that's really cool that there was a mention of this. Like that that's what I love about this. This whole story. Like, I know there's three different, um, titles. And, and they, they all feel a little bit different to me. It almost feels like the, the writing was kind of different in each of them. Just, just a little bit. Uh, but I love how they feel so connected. It's almost like they were all wrote at the same time. Like, it was just one continuous story. Even though it was split up into three. Like, it, it just flows so naturally. Uh, and then they have moments like this where it calls back, you know? Like, I love it. Like, it, it's just very well written. Like, I absolutely love it. It's just so rewarding, because you can look back and see these moments, and then they, like, mention it, and you're like, Oh, yeah, of course. That makes total sense now. So, so they don't just make up something and then, you know, do something about it later. Like, it just, it all flows together, like it was planned. Luko is thrown completely off guard. She quickly regains her composure and goes deep in thought. でも明らかに今の唐沢君にも昔の面影がありますし、それで分からなかったということは何らかの歪みが発生したということ、それともたんに吉田さんの性格の問題なのか。うしは、trying to explain this. パパ、私部屋に置いてある服取ってきていい？あ、言っといて。それじゃあ私は失礼します。Well, that's a good question, too. Like, if we would have failed, would things have, like, been differently? Or was it always meant to be this way? That's the thing I love about time travel, is, like, you have these questions. Like, how does that work, right? Because uh, time travel is really wonky. It can mess with things. You know, you kind of change timelines. That's what I was wondering when we first came into the room. Like, or or even when we were first out in the uh, front of the school. Like, I wanted to know how did, how did, you know, finishing this and doing this and sending them back uh, affect the school. So, interesting. Our brain's still at it. It's really something that's difficult to process. よしださんはもう存在していたんですよ。いや。そんなに不思議。不思議じゃないんですか。だってさ。ビュースグランドのセイシーさんは、ファンデリー。リッチーや牛尾さんたちが俺のこと助けてくれないわけないもん。だから
So he's remembered the entire time he could have just dropped by and been like, oh yeah, here you guys, they're doing this whole plot at the school. But like, it's a canon event, he can't interfere. Okay. Good up, Muko, that's the kind of guy Amaro is. So he had full confidence because he was, you know, alive, because he remembered all of that. He already knew what the ending was. He didn't need to interfere at all. He could have possibly changed it if he did, actually. You've known that for a long time now. Well, that's really cool. That's why I love time travel, because you get cool shit like this. Where, like, these, these really cool moments where it's just like, Oh, I already knew everything happened the way it did, because I'm still here. She sighs and a smile breaks across her troubled face. You know, that's what you love about us. <laughs> <laughs> Gotaro was like, what happened to this timeline? How is she saying that? Amara looks a bit embarrassed as Minko <laughs> 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 Gosh, older Omaru is an upgrade. <laughs> He's freaking Chad Omaru now. I never thought I would get to say that. What the heck is she teaching her dad? Oh my gosh, he's turned into a boomer. He's like learning things from his daughter. <laughs> this moment is so good. This is so rewarding right now. Never would imagine the three of us would be able to meet here again. Even though he's all grown up now, he hasn't changed at all on the inside. And this is why time travel is my favorite, because you get moments like this that would never happen otherwise. It's so good. Members of the Bureau for the Investigation. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to read it in a really monotone voice. Members of the Bureau for the Investigation of Special Affairs. <laughs> so anyways, let's go back to reminiscing. <laughs> let's ignore that. There's totally something happening. Alright, let's keep going. Hell yeah! I'm so glad they put this CG in here too. Ah, uh, I love Amaro so much older. Like, he's so much better. He nods with a smile. Gosh, this is so badass. Yeah. Are they gonna end it here? Like, this is the end. I'd be kind of okay with that, but I—I I mean, we didn't have—we didn't have our romance. I, I know there's some side stories. You guys told me. I was literally like messaging the Discord as I'm playing this. <laughs> um, I like paused the video. I'm like messaging them, like, "Hey, I'm playing the ending right now." I don't think I got triple S. Yeah, I got A. Uh, this is actually on the halfway mark. Wow, I, I only got half. I didn't roll a die for my answers. That's an A! That's pretty good! I don't get a CG bonus. I want the bonus CG. She's scolding me right now. Rito's like, you could have done better. Look here to see your, your reward CG. Do, oh, do I still get it? Or do I have to get the, uh... Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm looking at what the CG is right now. Okay, we're gonna save that. I'll show that on screen real quick. But, um... I'm gonna go back and get the, the triple S, I promise. Let's see how the title screen's changed. Has it changed at all? Hell yeah! Hell yeah, look at this for King CG. Look at this! 
Oh, that's great. I love this so much. I like how Angel is wrapped around Michiru, which is kind of surprising when she shouldn't she be Oh wait though. Okay, she so she's wrapped around her, and then look at the thing in between their hands. So that's like kind of like passing the torch, like, hey, I'm giving you back your power. Okay, that's badass. You get to see freaking Louie with his red eye. Uh you you know, you got Shizuka kind of looking down. I was really expecting Shizuka to have more of a big moment. Um he didn't really get to have too, too much i mean he had the moment where he's talking to Mitru. like i said that was his big moment for me uh, i was just expecting it to be more like action based but i i really like that he kind of went down the uh, uh uh the more emotional you know part of that and, and comforting her in her time in need that was really cool uh hanatate over here smiling love it um Adelheid, you know with her potions i mean that's just that's how it is. Kuradani and, and Sora, you know, kind of over here. Like, they were important to the story, but... Uh, and then Ushio. I really like that Ushio's kind of right above. You know, like, putting her hands right above this kind of um, exchange of power. Because she's the one that kind of enabled it. Like, going back in time, she's the one that kind of got them there. Uh, okay, then we got Rito right here holding her book. You know, obviously a big importance to the story. Uh, Momo, interestingly enough, kind of looking to the side, kind of distraught. Maybe that's because she wanted, uh, their plan to succeed so, so badly. She was trying desperately to help. Fujito smiling with the freaking ermine. What a surprise. Uh, Furia, uh, smiling, you know. And then, interesting enough, they put Hina here on the side. Kind of, almost like she's, uh, in the shadow. You know, the, the Daybreak of Remnant Shadow, obviously. Uh, interesting. And then we got uh, Eva right there, and then Ulrich kind of on the side. Uh, really cool, though. Uh, obviously, I have to go through this another story thing, which we're gonna do probably in a separate episode, because I've heard those are a little bit longer. So, uh, I might have a few more episodes dedicated to those. I'm not sure. Let's check real quick. Okay, so we have Ushia, we have others, and we have Rito. Rito gets a side story? Let's go! Okay, I'm really excited about that. Uh, oh, I can't even do the Ushio one. I have to do these two first, and then I do the Ushio? They're they're trolling me. I don't even get to see the freaking Ushio ending yet. Um, so we'll do those. I'll probably dedicate an episode to each one. I think that's only fair. So we'll probably have three more episodes, for sure. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, Triple S ending real quick. Uh, and then I'm going to get my final thoughts. Uh kind of on the story or should i wait to do ushio's route i don't know i'll probably give some of my final thoughts about that and then we'll do that and then i'll probably end up giving more thoughts anyways uh but hold on real quick i'm gonna go ahead and get the best ending because that's where we get like the, the best cg okay i did it i think we're i think we're good I always did take your plight seriously. I just made some wrong choices, okay? Alright, where's my CG? I need it, Rito. Where's the CG at? I want, I want the CG. It's always a nice CG of her if you get SSS. Holy shit! What do you mean? This isn't a freaking CG of Rito. This is better. Okay, I'm gonna put this on screen. I, I really wish they would have saved this for her route though. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll get something like that in her route. I don't know. Uh, but I'll go ahead and save that and show that to you guys because that's awesome. A reward, in other words. Oh, that's, that's great. Why did we get this? I wanted this so bad. <sighs> this is great, though. I really like it. Okay. All right, back to the title. Well, I already, guys, I already, like, kind of went through this whole title screen, so I'm not going to go through it again, but uh, we're going to be starting the uh, another story here. I think the pieces of the diary is, like, just... We could go back and, like, look at them. Uh, okay. I thought the blacked out ones were ones we were missing. I was like, what? I think that's really cool, though, that they get you, like, something to just go back and look at those really quickly. Uh, but, yeah. Awesome title screen. 
let's let's talk about flowers falling in the morning mist um, compared to Daybreak of Remnant Shadow. Um, Daybreak of Remnant Shadow to me was just incredibly hype. Like this was really good too. I think this had some amazing moments that rival a lot of the moments in that game as well. But I think Daybreak of Remnant Shadow was just perfect to me because it was kind of this in between one that just made me incredibly hyped to play this one. Uh, I think without that, this wouldn't have been nearly as good, right? Like, there was just so many awesome moments in that. Like, so many moments that just blew my mind. Uh, I want to say the second one was better. Now, that might be controversial, because the third one was really good. Like, uh, I'm not downplaying the third one at all. I'm not saying it wasn't good, because it was incredible, too. I just think the second one was absolutely amazing. Uh, I don't know, though. I think the third one started off a little bit stronger, though. I don't know. It also kind of started off pretty pretty quiet, but at the same time, it was really good. Like, ah, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I would say I really loved Daybreak of Run and Shadow. I think it was amazing. Uh, but the, the third game wasn't, like, any less, okay? I think it was, it was up there as well. Uh, the first one, you guys already know my thoughts on the first one. I think the first one was the most lackluster. Uh, I think it's really cool because we can look back, having learned things later, and look back and see that it had some cool um, kind of implications and, and things you could have noticed. But I, I just think overall it kind of lacked because it was mostly just us like kind of going after Mist or whatever, which, you know, wasn't as exciting. I liked when they kind of moved past that. We kind of already knew about the Mist. We've handled them. So when we had cool moments like Fujito using the uh, Serpent Mist, we already knew what that was. We already knew what it did. I think it was really rewarding in that sense. So I can't say the first one, like, wasn't needed. It absolutely was needed, and it had some cool moments too, but I feel like they were more towards the end when we started getting some big reveals. Um, which, which is usually, like, I think every game has a lot of big reveals towards the end, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think the third one had some really badass CGs. I'll say that that I think this one probably had the coolest CGs because we got so many of them. Uh, and a lot of them were really good. I really liked the one with uh, uh, Hina and then Fujito and Momo on the side. Those were really good. I would go into the CGs right now and show you guys which ones I'm talking about, but I think that there's some lewd ones in there. Um, is there lewd ones? We didn't really have an H scene. I'm not willing to risk it, because then that means I have to do more editing, and I want to do more editing. So, uh, you guys know. I, I, you've seen all the CGs. I think the one with Michiru and Koga was really nice. Uh, I like the one with Angel visiting Michiru. That was really cool. Like, there's just so many. And then, of course, Koga and Ushio have a lot of CGs together that were really nice. Um, so, I, I won't I won't spend too much time on those. But Fujito and, and the freaking Nino Mai Ermine. Ah! So good, though. I, I liked all the CGs those two had together. Because their mind always looks so mischievous. Anyways, though, uh, I think there was a lot of amazing... Excuse me. A lot of amazing moments in here. Um, I, I, I think probably my favorite moment, though, was probably either the scene with Michu and Shizuka talking, surprisingly. I think that one most recently is the one that stuck in my mind. Uh, I think that was really great. Uh, I think I really like the CG where, you know, uh, Koga and the, uh, Mitsuyoshi and Michiru, uh, their last name's Koga, so it's kind of hard to say that, but I really like them hugging. I think that was a really emotional scene, but wow. Yeah, there, there was just incredible moments in this. Uh, there was a lot of silly things too, like them using the bottle rocket to try to hit the projector. I'm like, that was never going to work, guys. Come on. Uh, I'm really glad they redeemed it, though, with giving... Um, Mitsuyoshi like power and and kind of getting to see that we had to wait till the very end though um but still kind of cool still kind of a cool way to like wrap things up so I'm really looking forward to the uh other stories I'll kind of give some thoughts as I go through those apparently there's quite a few uh I I know I just mentioned that I was going to do like three videos might have to do more than three videos we'll we'll see I don't know uh, I've heard those are a little bit longer um, to make up for the fact that there was no routes in this. Um, just because Ushio is kind of the main girl now. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Uh, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see what I end up doing. I'll try to cover as much of that. 
well, I'm going to cover all of it, but I'll try to cover as much of it as I can in the smallest amount of videos I can. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to end it here, though. That was that was technically the true end. Uh, and then we got a little bit of uh, kind of side stories. And I'm assuming Ushio is going to get kind of her ending. And uh, I'm looking forward to that now that they're not on hold. That'll be fun. Anyways, I'll end it here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for kind of following along with me. I know this isn't the last episode I'm going to have, but this is kind of like the end of a journey in a way. Uh, and I appreciate you guys like following along with me. Uh, I've really enjoyed like talking to you guys about it and like hearing your theories. Um, it, it's been great. Like obviously, I think most of us were probably wrong. Maybe some of you guys had this all figured out. I don't know. I certainly didn't. Uh, it's been great kind of like reading your theories and, and and seeing how plausible they were. And now we've seen that most of them weren't at all. It's been great. So I'll end the video here. We're going to do a few more episodes clearly to do the extra stuff. And then uh, that will be the end of, of Clockwork Leyline, which is kind of sad. I don't want it to end, but uh, I think I want to leave on a high note, obviously. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.